All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. So my name is Kevin, and welcome back. And if you are new here, we do car reviews primarily, uh, new and used, doesn't really matter, we don't discriminate. And today we are actually at Capital Mazda of Cary once again to do a video on the 2020 Mazda CX-30. So it's a brand new vehicle, just came out, and uh, they let me do a review on this vehicle. So. You can definitely check out their website, uh, Capital Mazdas, that is, and definitely reach out to Will Rodden and, and at least thank him for, um, you know, giving us this opportunity to check these vehicles out because I have done literally every single model of Mazda that's come out except for the previous generation CX-30 because I didn't really care for it because I knew that this one was going to come out. So uh, I waited for this. So huge shout out to will uh, i'm going to leave all of his information down in the description box he's the one who, the sales associate that helps me here with these reviews so take your time check them out so now let's just get right into the new cx30 here let me just uh, pull this bad boy out so this is indeed the new cx30 and um What's so special about this car? Uh, where does it stand in the lineup? Well, it kind of, it's like the smallest SUV that they make essentially. Uh, sits right below the Mazda CX-5 and uh, in this driving segment that we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna kind of go through, you know, how it feels out in the, you know, the real world that is. And kind of test it out because I think this is actually a very unique vehicle. I think this might actually be just the most versatile vehicle in the um, the Mazda lineup right now. I've driven the Mazda 3. I guess Mazda 3 people will be like, you know, what's the point of this? There is a point to this vehicle. You know, this vehicle, it sits slightly higher than a Mazda's, Mazda 3 essentially. So like the hatchback, that does a couple of things. It's going to ride a little bit better because there's going to be a little bit more give in the suspension it's going to be a little bit easier to get in and out of this thing especially if you're a bit elderly you know or you have like back issues or whatever this is going to be far easier to get in and out of this thing also another thing is a lot of people are complaining about i guess mazda 3 hatchbacks like kind of just lack of space if you will uh, both in the back seat and the trunk well this kind of does fix that actually i have a legitimate amount of room to sit behind myself I guess not like a plethora of, of room, but it's definitely enough. You know, I'm five foot 11 and with my seat set the way that it is for the driver's seat, I can sit behind myself. I like the way they kind of cushion in the, uh, the seat, this front seat. So like your knees kind of just dip inside of the front seat, if you will, uh, for the rear passengers. They, uh, they also did some, you know, very smart things like, you know, they kind of raised up the seat, if you will. So the rear passengers just have a lot more tow room if you will. So these are just kind of like the small nuanced things that really add up. That's the kind of, you know, attention to detail that Mazda is doing to their vehicles. And that's kind of what makes them each new one just a little bit better. Uh, and obviously the trunk space, if you will, is also really excellent. Actually, uh, it's far greater than what you might get in like a Mazda 3 hatchback. So it's a little bit more versatile, a little bit more spacious, and it should be a little bit more comfortable. So now that we kind of have those little things out of the way, let's uh, kind of get into this little driving segment here. It's a bit of traffic, you know, that's kind of why I started out with that, um, you know, the practical stuff first. So right off the bat, you know, driving this around for a little bit, um, it's definitely far more comfortable than a Mazda 3, that's for sure. It does use a strut base suspension in the front and a torsion beam in the rear. It is, granted, one of the most, you know, uh, well-engineered torsion beams that you're ever probably going to get in the market. Pretty much feels identical to a multi-link. That's kind of um, what makes this torsion beam special. The vehicle does weigh about 3,200 pounds, so it is like 200 pounds more than the equivalent like Mazda 3 Ascension. That's what front wheel drive. This vehicle is offered with all wheel drive. So adds about an extra 200 pounds, so about 3,400 pounds with all the options and all wheel drive. This is like the preferred option. So so definitely has some options on this bad boy, you know, like boat speakers and all that stuff. And this thing rides on 18 inch wheels. So as standard, you do get 16 inch wheels. This thing, even with 18 inch wheels, rides pretty damn good actually, I'm not gonna lie. It's got that two and a half liter four-cylinder engine that um, some people are like oh it's not enough or whatever listen i love this motor it's 186 horsepower 186 pound feet of torque two and a half liter uh sky active g i believe this is i i always really enjoyed this motor in both the cx5 and in the mazda 3 so i'm not just Mazda turbo all day long type of guy i actually do really appreciate this engine what it has to bring to the table especially in this 
segment because I think like the Toyota CHR and like the Honda HRV or whatever, they pale in comparison to the amount of power that you get compared to this. Uh, so this definitely probably is one of the faster vehicles in this segment. Brakes are extremely natural, you know. I'll try to explain to you what kind of separates my, like every car, every like new car is actually pretty good. You know, you can pretty much find something to like about every new car that you get into. Cars have just gotten that good nowadays. So let me just try and explain what Mazda is doing here. So Mazda is definitely going for that kind of high quality, kind of just that premium market. Now, you know, this vehicle as stickered is like 28 grand. You know, some may look at that and be like, you know, it's one of the more expensive options in this category and it is, but you got to realize what you're getting here. I mean, it's pretty much like identical, like Audi levels of quality in here. And we're going to go through the interior segment in a bit. The driving dynamics also have like this, you know, this European solidity to it while still having that kind of Japanese lightness to it. It's a very unique feel that only Mazda thus far has been able to capture. I said this in the RAV4 video, like a Toyota feels like a Toyota and it's true. And I can't really be much more specific on that because it's just, it is what it is. Like every like manufacturer kind of has its own feeling. You know, this vehicle right here, you know, the not actually a whole lot of body roll, you know, it has like that European solidity to it that I really appreciate. Brakes are nice and progressive. You know, you can kind of just chuck it in feels really controlled, really balanced actually, which I really appreciate. You could definitely get a bit of torque steer out of this bad boy if you wanted to, but it gets up to speed nice, progressively and smoothly. You know, that's one of the few things that you get with the naturally aspirated engine. That's why I really like this, you know, higher displacement four cylinder so much. You know, it's gonna be a bit smoother than like, you know, your 1.5 liter four cylinders, right? Cause it's just higher displacement and just rings out, it just progressively builds that power. I think a lot of people would enjoy that. This um, definitely obviously not as sharp as the uh, Mazda 3 hatchback. I mean, that's to be expected. Obviously, it's a little bit higher up, you know, weighs like an extra 200 pounds. But I think what you gain out of this is just a far more practical experience for the road. And I think uh, Mazda enthusiasts will still be able to appreciate this, both for its solid driving dynamics and also just the greater amount of space that this vehicle offers. And like I mentioned, I didn't drive the, the previous generation CX-30 uh, because I knew that this was gonna come out. So obviously I know that this is gonna be improved over that generation, you know, utilize that Kudo styling and all that. And it looks absolutely stunning, you know. I think I grabbed some B-roll of the, uh, the crystal red metallic version, I guess. I'll definitely be playing that throughout this video. And it is definitely a beautiful color, definitely, um, you know, accentuates like the shape and overall just look of this vehicle, right? Of these new modern Mazas. And other nice things that they've done is they've definitely improved the uh, the visibility uh, over the previous gen is what they what they were saying. Um, the A pillars, the C pillars, they kind of shrunk in that to improve visibility. And yeah, it's actually a pretty easy to drive car in here. And the, uh, the driving position is very excellent. It is just so easy to see out of this vehicle. Like the hood line, just this whole just like front windshield here is just raked and you can just absolutely see everything. Very simple. Uh, the side mirrors are a good size and uh, this bezel-less mirror gives you like the maximum amount of, uh, you know, what you can see out of a mirror, you know? So driving this very easy, obviously it's one of the smaller SUVs, so it's just very easy to place on the road, so there's no issues with that. Kind of getting into the interior here. Um, you know, I really like their new kind of Audi-like, you know, look that they've got going on here. This 8.8 .8 inch uh, screen looks absolutely stunning. It's a very nice, like high definition, just crystal clear um, screen here. Very easy to navigate as well. It's not a touch screen. You kind of just like go through it with the, um, with this knob here and just press enter. Very simple stuff. Almost uh, kind of laid out similar to like the BMW iDrive system actually. Very easy, really love that. The Bose system in here, stunning, uh, like it is in most Mazda cars. Uh, it's actually super just crystal clear in here. Definitely worth the money. I definitely do appreciate this Bose audio system. 
The seat comfort in here is phenomenal. Actually, very similar to the Mazda 3. The Mazda 3 had amazing seats, and this also kind of replicates that. Love it. I like the tri-tone colors going on here. It's like black with a bit of brown and these white seats. It's a very superb combination. I really just like it. There's a great sense of just quality. I love the design of it. As far as any drawbacks, you know, a bit, bit of uh, gloss black plastic, which could get scratched up, but you know, look, looks pretty good. Brand new, so that's nice. Um, just everything has a solid feel. Obviously, it's a brand new car, so it's obviously going to be solid. Uh, but I had a few press cars with a couple thousand miles on it, and uh, they still held up pretty good. I do think that this Mazda will as well. The steering feel both just the wheel itself and just the steering performance of it is very solid. Uh, has a very like just everything's a very natural progressive feel to it. Again, you know, the only like caveat to this is because it's a bit higher, it's not going to quite have the same sharpness as you might get out of like a, you know, like a hatchback or something, you know. And uh, if you want to know a little fun fact about Mazda, uh, now that I'm in this empty parking lot, if you actually have the car parked in one place and uh, you actually turn the wheel all the way to the right and you actually just make a full little circle, the car will actually go back to the exact same parking spot. Did you know that? I know that now because I'm doing it. And would you look at that? It did do it. So uh, apparently no other car <laughs> will do that. So busting U-turns in here is like a cinch. So very nice practical everyday vehicle actually um i think um uh, if you're in the segment like in the new like you're looking for a new car either to like buy or lease any mazda you know not just this but like all of them are gonna have like this incredibly designed interior space dude like this is by far in every mazda you know aside from driving the car i think one of my most favorite things is just sitting in them this is you can go to any other manufacturer and yeah, they're going to be pretty nice, but they're not going to be this nice. I promise you that. That's not even, I'm not even trying to gas this car up. That's just the absolute truth. You can also appreciate one touch up and down windows that I think is standard, even on like the base car. So that is very awesome as well as just automatic headlights, you know, that which is just like the small things that just add up to a lot. There's a lot of attention and detail with these cars that people don't appreciate. And obviously when you get up to these, you know, more fully loaded cars, yeah, you're going to get like the you know, full, like, you know, all leather interior with the, you know, all electric seats, of course, and this heads up display, which is uh, very nice. The screen you're going to get in all the cars, actually, uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto does come with all that stuff. So there's not really much to complain about with these vehicles. Um, I guess the biggest competition to this is like Mazda itself, right? Like the Mazda 3, you know, what do you kind of value more? Like, do you favor just a slightly sharper driving dynamic or do you appreciate a bit more comfort bit more space that's totally going to be up to you and obviously which one do you like the looks of the most um, that's also something to note otherwise every mazda especially if you get it equipped with this two and a half liter four cylinder you can enjoy a phenomenal fuel economy i've been driving this for a couple miles and um, it hasn't gone below the 130 like mile range mark you know and i've been averaging like over 20 mpg so that's very nice so other than that, I'm not going to beat this to death. You know, I've literally reviewed every single Mazda. Definitely check them out. It'll go more in depth with all the interior stuff. It's literally all the same. All the great stuff that I love is here, you know. Uh, tactile buttons and functions for, you know, all the HVAC, you know, heated seats. You know, there's like buttons for everything. Everything is logically laid out, easy to use. Six-speed trance not only performs excellent, but it's also got a nice just click to gear thing so it's just very natural easy to use and yes i do like the six speed automatic transmission very much because well it just shifts properly and you don't need 12 gears to move a car around that's just <laughs> in a lot of ways just marketing gimmicks honestly so this is a no gimmick car i appreciate it and if you're in the market i think you will definitely appreciate this car so with that i just want to thank um Capital Mods of Carriage once again for letting me check out the brand new Mazda CX-30. So a uh, huge shout out to them again. Will's information is going to be down in the description box below. I don't think there's any owners of this car yet, but if there are, leave your comments down below. Or if you've at least tried it out, let me know. So it's not just my thoughts and opinions that are out there. I absolutely appreciate driving this car, but if you have other opinions, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.